I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Benjamin Mayo McKee. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? I'm going very well, and how are you? I'm excellent, my friend. Uh, pretty excellent. Uh, what Tell us, what part of the world are you in right now, Benjamin? I'm in Adelaide, South Australia. Oh, that's wonderful, wonderful. And which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time? I suppose it's probably my acting or my podcasting. Podcast, um, podcast, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We certainly do love podcasts, but yeah, I've, I've been uh, entertaining, I suppose, for over half my life. So that's probably the reason that I'm here talking to you today. Hmm. Pretty fascinating how one thing can connect another thing, isn't it? It certainly is. I mean, everything within the entertainment industry connects. So I started out purely acting, and then that led to directing, which led to writing and producing, which ultimately led to podcasting, which has led to uh, radio work here for the ABC. So it, it's very much a, a chain connection. Yeah, and now it's led to you speaking to this guy all the way in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So who did you learn the skills? Well, hey, first let's talk about the name of your podcast, right? Which talk, I'm uh, talk about your name pun intended right so tell us the name of your yeah. podcast and then tell us what you do there please so the podcast is called benjamin may mckay's talk to me and on the show i interview uh, uh entertainment celebrities so people from uh, movies tv um radio shows anyone who's had an interesting career um and who are willing to talk about it so i've had some great guests like david yates who directed the harry potter films and uh, last week I spoke to James Masters, who played Spike in the TV series Buffy, and he's just joined uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I get some fantastic guests from all over the world. Yeah, I love your interview style as well. It's like you're just in the shadows asking those questions. I, I loved the conversation with the Spock guy, right? Uh, pretty amazing yeah. stuff going on there, Benjamin. So who did you learn that skill Thank you. from? You're welcome. Well, I suppose it came from a lot of, of listening to other people and, and how they conducted interviews. So because I trained as an actor, you, you do elocution lessons and you learn how to speak properly, which I think is the first uh, step in, in making a podcast. Because if you don't know how to speak and communicate well, then you can't connect with guests or your audience. And so after I did elocution lessons, I listened and, and watched as many chat shows as possible. And I learned from the people I could watch. So Michael Parkinson, uh, Graham Norton, Alan Carr, Jonathan Ross, Adam Hills, all of these entertainers have had shows where they interview people. And I don't necessarily agree with everything they do, but they've all got something that I like. and I'll, I'll take a bit of that or I'll learn from that. And um, I think one of the most important things that an interviewer can do is react and respond to what a guest says because so many people will ask a question and then just ask the next question as opposed to actually having a conversation. Yeah. Have you had uh, the, the place or time when you felt as though if you didn't interject in that you would die? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, I think every interviewer on the planet has had that. Yeah, it's, it's a natural knack, I think, that develops eventually. And just the space between taking that action, I think, really sets you off in your career. Have you had that experience as well? Yeah, I, I think so. I think there have been you know, certain interviews and certain moments within those interviews that have uh, you know, resulted in, in uh, being noticed by other people and, and helping to set out and uh, identify my career on a bigger scale. So, for example, when I spoke to the director of the Harry Potter films, I was very lucky to get a lot of exclusives out of him hmm. uh, regarding the Fantastic Beasts uh, trilogy, or I think it's five films they're making. And because of that, because of my persistence with that, you know, I tried to get him on the show for two years, and it was persistence, and then you know, really listening to him and, and pressing him, but not too much to annoy him of for course. those exclusives. You've got to walk that fine line. You don't want to be a hassle, but if you can get something out of him, then that's fantastic, and I was very lucky that I did. Hmm. 
Why will you continue to repeat the skills that you so well execute right now, Benjamin? I'll, I mean, I'll continue to do it because I love it. I, I don't, you know, it comes down to the fact that podcasting isn't necessarily the way to make money. It's not how I make money. I know a lot of podcasters out there don't. It's They do it because they love it. And I love talking to people, as I assume you do as well, because we both you know, have shows where we talk to people. And I will continue to do it because it's something in addition to my acting and directing and, and producing and writing. And it's something a little bit more fun, but it also gives me some fantastic contacts that occasionally I get to work with as well when I go out there and direct and act. Hmm. And having these contacts is just fantastic because these are people you can't just walk off the street and, and say, will you be in this project or that project? <laughs> Most definitely. Well, tell us one other thing, Benjamin, that you've done consistently over the last three years. Over the last three years consistently. Um, well, I suppose every every morning I do uh, vocal exercises. I mean, that is the most consistent thing about my routine because I'm always talking and always uh, working, and whether it's talking to producers or other actors or uh, being interviewed or interviewing people. And if I don't do those vocal exercises, then I feel like my voice would just be destroyed by this point because you do spend hours talking yeah i know the feeling oh i know the feeling how does it make you feel um understanding that you are building up your voice um it just gives me a confidence in the fact that i can go out into the world or the day or even just the next interview and not have my voice crack or, or fail um you know or, or hopefully not break down into some sort of coughing fit um you've always got to be very careful and just knowing that i've warmed up the voice it's that feeling of security that i can get through the next day or even next day, few hours mm. so all right please advise angel where should he go to learn about warming up his voice please so i think I mean, there are some fantastic youtube videos a lot of the vocal exercises out there come from singers and musicians uh, especially like opera singers who have to take even more care of their voice than, than people like uh, we do. And if you just put vocal exercises into YouTube, some of the most uh, viewed videos uh, on there are fantastic and they'll take you through it step by step. Love um, it. And also, yeah, just working with a singing coach, even if you don't want to sing. Well, I mean, I sing for musical theatre, but I've been doing singing lessons uh, for years and working with someone that's another way to really strengthen and help maintain your voice. Yeah, thanks for that. Amazing audience. Again, we are live with Benjamin Mayo McKee, and you could definitely check out his podcast, Benjamin Mayo McKee. Again, so Mayo is spelled M E I O. Um, I'm sure he pops up in iTunes when you're searching it. Talks to me, Benjamin Mayo McKee talks to me. Well, my friend, let's switch gears for a moment now and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Benjamin, what is your earliest childhood memory? Um, my earliest memory is seeing the Phantom of the Opera. I was uh, three or four years old, um, and my parents, and my mum took me to see the Phantom of the Opera, the musical by Andrew Lloyd Webber, hmm. um, and it was touring to Adelaide. And I just remember the scene where um, the Phantom is scaring uh, Christine, and his voice comes from uh, all the different places in the in the theatre, and as a child, I didn't understand that the, the voice was recorded and then played from, you know, three different speakers. Wow. I was was amazed how quickly the actor was able to move from, from place to place. <laughs> and I seeing that show was the instance that made me realize I had to entertain uh, for, a, for a living and for a career. Wow. So, yeah, that that's it's one of my favorite memories, but it's certainly my earliest. Wow. Well, hey, I do not believe I need to help any way or anyhow with connecting that memory to who you are now. <laughs> 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 that is amazing. Wow. All right, my friend, if we fast forward it to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? Um, it probably would have been uh, Don't Stop Believing, but the Glee cast version, uh, because when I was... Growing up, and Glee was, you know, sort of just on television. I'd been on television for about three or four years, and that made musical theatre and, and performance uh, cool, for lack of a better word. So when when Glee was in its most popular, I loved that show, and um, everyone around me, not just entertainers and you know acting kids and performance kids, loved that show. So that was something I could almost connect to a. Uh, normal person regarding so yeah i really love the glee class soundtracks and, and don't stop believing was one of my favorite songs yeah 
Well, you keep connecting the dots here. Uh, definitely, hey, you didn't stop believing, right? And look at what has, right, a, yeah. has, a, has occurred here. Pretty amazing stuff. You know, it's so simple in terms of the connection, yet so uh, supreme, if you would, what has happened in your life and who you've become. So again, well done, Benjamin. Well done. And to your parents as well. Well done. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Well, Benjamin, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there is a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? I am ready. Benjamin, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Not yet. Are you married? No. Do you have children? No. Do you believe in God? No. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Uh, No, but I'd like to. (laughs) How about three hours a week? Yeah, that sounds about right. And what about screen time the phone and or the computer is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day uh, probably around eight hours considering a lot of the work i do is with screens hmm, benjamin after a thousand and one conversations in three months in 2016 i came up with the workbook the name of it is called yours it stands for your own unique real self and the idea is you answer questions similar to these and through self-discovery hopefully connect to your own unique real statement which i believe is your mission statement if you, Benjamin, had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Benjamin Mayo McKay, what would you say that is? Um, I feel like it comes down to the word entertain. That That is who I am. I, I love entertaining. I'll entertain, you know, singing, acting, podcasting, whatever. I love it and it makes me who I am and it's what makes me get out of bed in the morning and gives me the power to get through, you know, the, the times when there isn't work and also the times when there's too much work. So I, I, yeah, I always bring it down to that one word, entertain. And right. that's that's my motto, emblem, if you like. Mm, Benjamin, this has been a great pleasure, my friend. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? I would absolutely love to tell your audience about a new audio drama uh, that I have released. It was, came out on November 30th. It's available on iTunes, Amazon, and Google Play. It stars the Doctor Who actor Paul McGann and Wolf Creek's John Jarrett. It's the largest Australian audio drama ever made with over 40 actors and has a completely original score by uh, Adelaide musician Sean Braithwaite. It's based off a popular series of sci-fi novels, The Phoenix Files, and parts two and three will be available later this year. But it's called The Phoenix Files, Man in the Shadows. You can get it right now. It's about three hours long, so it's definitely value for money. And it's available on iTunes, Amazon, or Google Play. And I would love for your listeners to check that out now. Love it. I will be checking it out most definitely. Benjamin Mayo McKay, my friend, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you, my friend. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.